Okay, so we're going to try and get through this practice exercise as quick as possible just to keep it within the time constraints of the video. So I've got all my files here in this practice one folder. What you'll need to do is you need to make a folder. Just right click anywhere on your desktop and go down to new and then folder and it will allow you to make the folder. Call it practice one. So the files then are located in the resource section of this lecture. So download them. They'll go to your downloads folder and then you can just drop them into that practice one folder. It will just leave everything easier for you. So once we have it open, you'll see we have it here. Once we have it open, they will have you know, four files in there. So you'll have this practice one. This is the questions for the practice exercise and then the three files that we're going to need from it. So I'm going to put away this and I'm going to start Excel and get going. I'm going to speed through this. You'll be able to um, slow it down as you're doing it with us. So it says open the spreadsheet application. We have this done and open the file called golf budget. So we're going to go to file and open. Once we go to open, it's going to ask us where do you want to open it from OneDrive computer, wherever it is. I'm going to open it from my desktop. It's where my practice one folder is and we're going to browse it. Once it opens here, we're going to go ahead and open this golf budget and that's it open there now. So this is all made up information. There's none of this accurate information. So don't worry about any names written that's in it. So once that's open there now, what we're going to do next is we're going to do question two. It's got a question one at the end of it. It's going to say save it as extension budget. So it's just telling us to save it as a new file name. We're going to go file, save as. We're going to save it into that practice one folder. And instead of golf budget, we're going to call it extension budget. So extension budget as an Excel workbook and we're going to say save. So that's it saved. That's question one. Now I'm going to speed through these as I said earlier on. I want to keep within the time. Number two then. Zoom to the costings worksheet up to 1000 to 100 percent. So at the minute we're going to go on to the costings worksheet down at the bottom here. You can see it's at 75 at the minute. We want to zoom to 100 percent. So you might have to just click around with it until you get it to 100. That's it. You could click on the number there and that would do it for you. Number three on the costings worksheet, widen column A. So you can see the information in column A here, you just can't see it all. So A and B is here. If we position the mouse in between the two of them, you see you get that arrow with double head in it. We can drag it wider, or what we could do is we can double click on the line and it'll auto fit for you. So that's the quickest way. Number four then, which one of the two cells, E7 or E8, displays good practice in totaling a cell range? So enter your answer. So we're talking about these two, E7 and E8. So this is E7 here and this is E8. Now both of these cells, E7 and E8, they both add up the cells that are to the left of them. E7 uses, and if you look in the formula bar, you can see it's adding up this one, this one, and this one. Whereas if I go to E8 and double click into it, you can see it's adding up the three cells, but it's using a cell range. So it's adding up from this one to this one. Now the one that uses the best practice, don't worry about writing it down here. It says to enter the answer in B22. If you want, you can put it in. But the the difference in them is if I just insert a column here, so you can see I'm after putting a column in between them there. And if I go now to this one and I click it, this one is adding up this cell, that cell, and that cell, which it was doing previously, but it's excluding this one out of the middle. Whereas if I go to the second cell and I double click, you can see that it has incorporated this new cell into it. So it's seen as better practice to use the sum rather than using equals one cell plus the other plus the other so that's the answer there again don't worry about writing it down number five enter 1600 in cell c11 so we want 1600 into cell c11 i'm going to remove this cell just because it'll cause us hassle later on and it wants us on d8 from 400 to 600 so d8 is here so we want to put 600 in there so that's it done. That's question five. Question six, enter a formula in cell B12 to calculate the sum of the range B7 to B11. So it's in this cell here, B B12, we want to put a sum formula in. Up at the top right hand corner, you have the auto sum options. So you can click on the auto sum and just go to your sum. Make sure it's doing the right figure. So B7 to B11, and then you can click your enter key. Number seven then wants us to copy the cell range from B12, which is B12 is here, across the rest of the cells from E12, C12 to E12. So it's from here right across to there. So that's copying a formula across. Number eight then, enter a formula in F7, which will, with an absolute cell reference for one cell only, that divides E7 by E12. Copy the formula in C in C7, so we want to copy it. So what it wants us to do is it wants us to enter a formula here in this cell, that divides this one by this one. And it wants one of them to remain absolute. So the total is always gonna remain absolute in this case, because what it wants to do is it wants to divide this one by this one. 
and then divide this one by this one and this one by this one and this one by this one and this one by this one so notice that this one here the total is always going to remain the same it's not going to change so what we're going to do is we're going to say equals and in the formula it says that divides e7 by e12 so we're going to type in e7 divided by e12 now if the absolute cell reference isn't just making total sense here now do go back and watch the lecture on it so we have to make one of them absolute and it's that f12 because we know it's the total and we just press f4 and we hit enter it wants us to copy it down across them so once we copy it down across you can see now if i double click in it's multiplying this one we're dividing this one by this one the next one down is dividing this one by this one the next one down is dividing this one by this one the next one down this one by this one and the next one down this one by this one so you can see this always remains the same at the very bottom there okay next question number nine format the cell range f7 to f11 as a percentage f7 to f11 is here that's the cell range i i tend to click on this we drop down arrow here the number format box so if we click on it it wants us to format it as a percentage so it's just taking a wee while to open up this is the first time this excel was open it's a brand new um copy of excel just so it, it, it's all new for you so i have percentage here on the left hand side so i put it to a percentage and on the decimal place you can see here i'm going to put it to two so it wants two decimal places as a percentage and we have it and we click on ok and you see it puts it into the percentages for me there number 10 enter a formula in cell b14 that subtracts b12 from b3 copy the formula so this is think of if someone says to you to subtract 7 from 10 it's 10 minus 7 so write that down in a bit of paper if you have to so it's always the second one you put first so if we want to subtract b12 from b3 it's going to be equal to b3 minus b12 so we're going to put in here equal to b3 minus b12 and that gives us our answer it's going to come up as a minus figure don't worry about that and we drag it across the whole way and it's going to do it for us so if you need to write that down write it down just so it makes total sense to you okay the next question number 11 enter a formula in b15 to calculate the maximum so it's b15 is here and what it wants to do is it wants us to calculate the maximum of the cell range b7 to b11 so it's this cell range here that we're talking about i'm not going to select them just yet so you can see it there so what we do is we click into where we want the answer to go in here we go up to the auto sum button and click on maximum and then what we do is we drag across the cell range just to make sure it's the right one the next one wants us to just copy it across we'll copy that across the next one's the minimum we'll do the minimum and copy it across and the last one is the average we do the average and we select it notice it's always going for the ones above it that's not what we want we want b7 to b11 have a good read of the question there if you want and we drag it across so if you need to you can pause the video till you get that done so that's the average done so the next thing we want to do is number 14 enter formula in cell j9 using the operator that adds b7 and b9 so it just wants us to do equal something plus something it says they're using the plus operator so the j9 is over here so it's going to be equals b7 plus b9 and we hit enter and it gives us our answer there so it's straightforward enough the next one number 15 wants us to enter a formula so if you look at it it's an if statement so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the wee bit of text that we usually do so remember this so we have the test we have the value if it's true and we have the value if it's false i want to show you the advantage to writing it down so reading the question enter a formula in cell b20 that's where we want the answer to go that displays yes if the number in c14 is less than zero so the test is c14 less than zero if it is true it wants it to display yes and otherwise displays no so that's the way that we read it again if you can't understand that go back and have a look at the lecture and it will make sense then so i want to remove these things here the value of true and the value of false so you can see there's our three lines of text it'll make more sense now in a second so into b20 which is b20 is here we want to do an if statement so we can go to the fx button at the top or we can go to this auto sum button and down to more functions okay so once we have the 
opened up here the insert function dialog box we want to search for if it is there below but we'll search for it anyway just so we're going through the correct procedure so we search for if Once it comes up there, we have, there's the if statement. Excel is a wee bit slow, because it's the first time I, I have this particular copy of it open. And now we have this, which we have the three sections. You can see one, two, three, and we have the one, two, three here, because we, so once it opens up here, we have the three sections, one, two, three, and we just put them straight in. So there's the first section. So the first section here, we go in and we do C14, less than zero into the value of true we put yes and the value of false we put no so you can see how easy it is once you write it down in english for you okay the next question format the cell range b13 to e17 in currency so b b3 to e17 so b3 to e17 is here that's that cell range we want to format it to currency again we can click this down arrow here the open box we go to currency and we want to format it to two decimal places. It would ask for two decimal places, or sorry, no decimal places, and it wants euros. So you can go down and put the euro symbol on it there once you've currency on it. So down through the euro, if you're from the States, you can put um, dollars on it, or you can put um, whatever symbol you want. But there's the euro symbol, so we have it there. It'll put the euro on it first. Copy the formatting from A6 to A14 and widen column A then if necessary. So here's A6, you want to copy the formatting. So remember, we don't want to copy the text. We want to copy the formatting. So we click on the cell first, we click into the format painter. It copies only the formatting. And then we click into cell A14, which is this one here. You can see now we do need to widen this column a wee bit. So again, we can double click here and that will widen it for us. The next thing we want to do, I'm going to move on to the second page here and we keep going at it. Now we are doing this at speed so we can get the time done. Insert a right aligned field in the footer of the costings worksheet. So we're on the costings worksheet here that shows the worksheet name. So we want to go into our page layout and I usually click this down arrow again. Once we click it, we have the header and footer section here. When we click the header and footer tab, you can see we've custom header, custom footer. We want a footer. It opens the footer, it wants us into the right aligned field, which is the right section. And this option here then is the worksheet name. So you can see it insert sheet name. When I click it, it should come up there, just costings or and tab. And you'll see when I go to the print preview, you'll see costings now. So you can see there it puts costings in it. So it just shows whatever name is in this tab. Don't worry if it says and tab or it might say and file if you're using the file name. It won't say costings or the file name until you actually look at this preview here. So that's it okay. On the donations worksheet, so moving on to the donations worksheet, it wants us to do something that we're able to sort. The question there, don't worry about the question. You can read through it, have a look at it. It's more of an English question. It wants you, what should you do? I'm going to show you exactly what you do. So in, in short terms, what we want to know is, at the minute you can see here, we have a list of first and second names. But we want to be able to sort them by second name or surname. Now we can't do it because obviously they're together. But what we can do is we can split this cell up. So what it wants us to do is we can select the entire column. So what we're going to do in simple terms is we're going to split it up that it's first name and last name to save you typing it out bit by bit. So before we start, the only thing that separates the first and last name is a space. So keep that in, in mind. So we have first name, space, last name, first name, space, last name. If it was a double barrel name, you just need to make sure that there's no space in between the two second names. Or what that would do is it would split it into three columns. So we select the text first. Notice I'm not selecting the very first cell because I don't want to split that up. I just want to split the names up. We select it. We go into data here and then we go to text to columns. So once we click into text to columns, it's just a matter of going through it. We can leave all the defaults. So we say next. It says the screen lets you set the delimiter. So the delimiter is what splits it up. So at the minute it has tab in. I'm going to click on space. You don't need to click off the tab. We can leave the tab on, but it's telling it that there's a space in between it. And you can see here in the preview, it's split it up and we say next and then we can say finish. And if you watch behind it here in the preview, you'll see exactly what happens. So now it has split it up at its first name and last name. So now you could go ahead if you wanted and sort them by last name. Number 20 then, on the donations worksheet, freeze row one and save. So we want to freeze this top row. So you can see when I scroll up and down, it's moving that first name field. So what we want to do is we want to freeze this top row. Now there's two ways of doing it. We can go into view, we can go to freeze panes and freeze top row and that will automatically freeze just the top row. Or what we could do is we could click into number two, so row two, 
go to view freeze paints and then freeze paints and what that does is it just freezes everything above itself so if you wanted to freeze the first seven rows you click in the row eight and you can see now you can scroll up and down and it leaves the first column where it is so it's handy for anyone sorting data okay number 21 then under the nation's worksheet apply settings so that the titles in row one would automatically print again it's dealing with that top row i'm going to go into my print preview here so if i go into print preview here and you'll see here on the right hand side we have the page the page and it shows us the bottom here one two one of three so there's page two and you can notice page two straight away it doesn't have that heading at the top whereas page one does so what we want to do is we want to put a setting in place that we're going to have that heading and the way we do it is we go to the page layout and into the page setup dialog box with so this wee one here on page setup we click into it and we click into the sheet tab so once we click in the sheet you can see there's a section here rows to repeat at top so we click in where the rows to repeat at top this side now we don't want to click in and type row one we want to click on row one at the left hand side so you can see i'm taking my mouse up with that black arrow i'm clicking on row one and it puts it in here dollar sign one dollar sign one and that just means always print row one the same as the absolute means always keep this cell we click on ok i'll just go in very quickly to show you the print preview now so there's page one i'm going to click on my print preview into page two and you can see it still remains on page two and it remains on page three as well so it's good again if you're printing out stuff and you want to keep that at the top Number 22, rename worksheet sheet 3 worksheet so that it's meaningful. It doesn't really matter what's on the sheet. We just want to look at how would you rename a worksheet. So we right click it and go to rename. This is to do with ages here. So we'll just put it as age. Just so that it reflects the content. Number uh, 24 no number 23 rename the bank loan worksheet as funding and save so there's bank loan right click it and we go to rename and we want to call it funding and then that's it and it says save so you would just click on the save icon at the top here 24 on the funding worksheet there is a name error in this value c8 why is the error displayed so what it wants us to do is this cell here you can see there's an error here it says name and it's, in other words there's an error here you can click on this wee error box and see exactly what it says invalid name error the name error is usually a spelling mistake or something like that you have the wrong word in and if we look up into the formula bar at the very top here you can see that it has equal sum and there's a small c there so that small c isn't supposed to be there so you can take it out and it will work then straight away for you so that's there's a list of them errors there if you look through the course you'll find them number 25 on a funding worksheet create a column chart accept the default column chart from the cell range a2 to b6 we're on the funding we want to select a2 to b6 which we have there now we go to insert and then we go to our chart so here's the charts and a column chart the default one is always going to be the first one so we select it and there's the column chart in so the most important thing is that you select everything a2 to B6, so exactly what they ask. The next one is on the funding worksheet, move the column chart to begin near A13. So it wants us to move it. So you always grab here at the top right corner and move it roughly around A13. So that's there. There's A13 and it has it there for us. Change the color of the co of the chart area to yellow. So I'm going to change this is the chart area. Click up here to select it. We go to the format tab of the chart tools, and here we have shape fill in the middle. And we pick a yellow color i'm going to pick maybe this color here i know it's probably hard in your eyes but that's the color that they're looking for you'll also see that if i hover across it it'll come up with the word yellow so it is looking for that the next thing it wants to do is it wants to change the color of the columns in the chart so the columns are here these four bars so we click on them you can see they're all selected they all have the small balls around them to a color of our choice again it's the same format of the chart tools go to shape fill and we'll just change them to maybe that red color it wants us to, um, number 29 wants to add the name into the left section of the header of the funding worksheet. So in the funding worksheet, again, the same as if we're doing the footer, we go into our page setup, header and footer, we go to custom header, there's the left side and you put your name in. You can look back over that twice or three times, just I know I'm doing it at speed, I'm conscious of the time. So we put it in, that's okay. It's in there in the header and footer. It says open a file called new members. It's in our folder so we go to file and open the new members file will be here so it's in our computer on our practice one from our desktop and there's new members and open and what it wants to do is it wants to change the margins to 2.5 top and bottom so we go to page layout page setup we click on the margins tab and we just make sure we put 2.5 in the top and 2.5 
in the bottom and you can see I'm just going in and I'm typing that straight in and I click on OK. The next thing we want to do is enter function B B42 to add up the number of new members. So B42 is here. I'm just going to click into B42 and what it wants us to do is it wants us to count the number of new members. So we're going to use a count function. Now when we're using count functions, there's two types of count functions. There's count and count A. And I'll show you the difference in the two. So we just go to our FX button, or if you want, you can use the auto sum we arrow at the side and go to more functions. These two buttons do the exact same thing. Go into more functions and there we have it. So when we do here, I'm going to type in count and I'm going to show you exactly what. So we'll just say go. If I click on count, you can see that the description below says count the number of cells that contain numbers. That's no good to us. Count A beneath it says count the number of cells that are not empty. So that's what we're looking for. It counts anything that has numbers and letters in it. So we click on OK. It comes up like this wee box here. So value 1, value 2. You don't need to use all the values. We just want to value 1. It wants to count the number of members. So we select them. And we say, OK, you can see it's giving you the preview there, 37. So it's telling you that there's 37 members in there. Number 32, open a file called scoreboard, save it to your practice folder as a template format. OK, now you can read through that question fully. I didn't really read through it fully, but you can read through it. So we've opened the file and we want to save it as a template. And what we're going to do is we're just going to file, save as. We want to save it as a template, so we just go to computer. We can go into practice one here just to save it. At the minute, it's saving as a workbook, so we want to save it as a template. So we click the down arrow here. Here's our template, and you can see there's other ones there. There's PDFs and there's 97003, but the particular one we want is a template. So we click on template. It'll automatically put it to your templates folder, and we click on save. So that's all 32 questions done there. Now, you'll be able to take more time doing them and you can slow it up and speed it up depending on what you need to do and stop and pause it. Okay.